Welcome to the Be Bold for Jesus podcast. We go to those on the front lines nationwide, bringing you special guests and topics facing Christians in today's world. We discuss matters of family, work, communities, and our nation, covering how to overcome life's challenges and embrace being bold for Jesus in our walk, God's word, his promises, and how to share our faith boldly with others. Now let's get bold. Welcome to the Be Bold for Jesus podcast. Today, we have a special guest. We have Joe Mayers. He is storyteller and founder with Think Forever. Welcome, Joe. Yeah, thanks for having me here. Well, I'm excited to hear a little bit about your background. I was excited to, um, to learn that you're going to be part of the Be Bold for Jesus conference this fall, and um, especially because I've been able to hear you present the BEMA uh, in San Diego a few years ago and, and just found it really captivating. Um, but before we launch into what you're doing now, Joe, I thought it'd be great to just hear a little bit about um, how you were inspired to do uh, this this BEMA storytelling and, and your background that led you into a place that you felt like that was something you were called to do. Sure. Um, so I've been performing for, for a lot of my life. Um, Christmas plays as a kid and then got more into doing live theater in high school. I wound up majoring in theater as, uh, as a college student. And after graduating from school, I spent some time up in LA and uh, pretty quickly realized that that wasn't a scene that I really wanted to stay in. Um, and so I thought that that was that for me, I was gonna find something else to do. And then it was back in uh, in 2015 when I was approached with the opportunity to present this one man performance of the Bema. So it's a, it's a dramatic performance, and it's the story of a man who is raptured and finds himself before the Bema seat, the judgment seat of Christ for believers, and he gets to see what his life looked like through the eyes of Jesus. Um, this is based on a book that was written by a guy named Tim Stevenson. Um, so it's a it's a fictional story. It's a novel. And it, it had been presented sort of in this way before, but I had the opportunity to revise it and add to it and uh, sort of give it some new life. And so I've been performing this show since 2016. Um, and really, I feel like all of the the training and, and things that I had done prior to that gave me the opportunity uh, so that when it was presented, I was able to pick that up and, and run with it. Yeah, well, and it certainly is, as I mentioned, captivating. So it sounds like you got introduced to the book and realized if, if you use some of your theatrical background, you could really bring this to life in, in, a, in a storytelling type manner. Is, is that correct? Well, it's a powerful story. Um, it's one that sticks with you because it's not something that we think about all the time. Um, particularly in the Western evangelical church, we spend a lot of time getting to the point of conversion and then not a lot of time thinking about what happens after that, particularly what happens forever and ever and ever. And uh, as it turns out, Paul in the New Testament spends quite a bit of time talking to believers about preparing for eternity after salvation, um, sort of echoing what Jesus said, that we should be storing up treasures in heaven. And, and that's really what I want to do, is I want to help inspire people to think about eternity. That's why we named the ministry Think Forever. Yeah, I, I appreciate that um, stewardship perspective of, of not just uh, accepting Christ as Lord and Savior, and then, well, now I just can't keep going about business as usual, but but seeing how do, how do I choose to steward the opportunities that God affords us um, to to make an internal impact, and so at some point as you were doing this Bema presentation. Um, you realize that there could be an additional platform um, that you've founded through Think Forever. Can you share a little bit about that? Mm -hmm. So I I started performing 
this show in 2016. And initially I thought it was going to be a one-off. It was a specific conference that requested this and it sort of grew its own legs <laughs> from there. Some people had seen it and said, you know, maybe we'd like to do something like that at one of our conferences. And over the course of time, I had a group of people who were encouraging me to take up this storytelling mantle and and really expand it. Because the thing about stories is that they speak to us at a heart level. And there are phenomenal teachers and preachers who are way smarter than I am. And the and people have to come to them. They have to want to engage, but everyone is willing to hear a story. And so that's what we were seeing is that we were being we were able to engage uh, with with people who may not otherwise be active listeners. And so the way that we decided to do that at first, uh, you know, in, in addition to the live performance was to start a storytelling podcast. And, and that came out actually earlier this year, uh, the first season of that. What I did was focus on lesser known characters from the Bible and put them into a historical and cultural context and did a lot of work to make sure we were sticking with the scriptural message of that of that character, but trying to give them a little bit of a backstory and help people to understand why is this person's name mentioned in scripture, because they're there for a reason. And it may just be that to our 21st century mind, we're not picking up on all the little context clues um, to that and got some got some really great response from that. Um and so I'm I'm looking forward to continuing to do that in the future as well. So it sounds like you're not necessarily just doing the the big stories uh, that that are prominent in the Bible, um, you know, stories of, of Noah or uh, mm -hmm. David, but maybe ones that are a little bit less well known. How what's that process look like in terms of how you're discerning which stories to select? Yeah, well. It's it's a lot of reading to start off and and just having a a curious mind really. Um, so if you if you read the book of Acts, there are a lot of characters that are just dropped in there, and you hear their name, and you kind of read past it because you say why why was that even important? For example, there's a man named Simon the Tanner, and he's in the book of Acts, I believe it's chapter six, and he's mentioned three times in a row over the course of two paragraphs. And so he's an important character enough that he's mentioned by name three times, but we don't really know all that much about him aside from his name and his profession. And so in doing a little bit of digging, a little bit of research about that character, you find that Tanner's at the time, particularly in Jewish culture, were sort of outcasts because of the nature of their work. They were handling dead animals. And this is the character that God chose to use to have Peter go and stay at his house. So an apostle is going to stay with this outcast. And it's on this man, Simon the Tanner's roof, that God gives Peter the vision of the food coming down on the sheet and saying, no, what, what I have called clean, do not call common. And then he gives him the charge to go and preach to the Gentiles. And so it adds this layer of complexity to the story that all things can be made new, that all things can be clean, that no one is to be outside of the family of God. And having this man who was uh, at the time an outcast as the conduit for that is really powerful. But that's something that's lost on us because because hearing... We don't come across tanners very often, do we? Yeah, we don't come across tanners. Some people don't even know that a, a tanner is someone who makes leather. And the process of making leather at that time was dirty and smelly. Yeah. Um, there, there are records of rabbis at the time giving wives permission to divorce their husbands if they decided to become tanners because the quality of life was going to go down so much. And so it's a really, really powerful metaphor uh, that just sails right over our heads. And it, it, made, it made a great story. 
so that was that was actually the first story that we told on the podcast. Awesome. Well, that sounds really great. Well, Joe, we're going to take a, a quick minute to hear from one of our sponsors, and we'll be right back. He's the Solution Ministries, a nonprofit supporter of Air One, presents Be Bold for Jesus, October 13th through 15th at the Spokane Convention Center in Washington. This three-day in-person and live stream conference includes speakers Greg Laurie, Lee Strobel, Jeff Foxworthy, and many more with an inspirational night of worship with Danny Gokey. New this year, youth breakout sessions. Bring the whole family to be equipped and empowered to boldly share the gospel with others. For tickets and more info, visit bb4j.com. All right, Joe. So it would be um, it'd be great to hear some of what you're just seeing um, right now. There's a lot of different forces at work in our culture that we can observe um, that are are fighting for people's attention in terms of who they see themselves as, their identity. Um, and so our our heart is to see uh, folks that we encounter to be bold for Jesus. As you have been engaging with the Bema with various audiences. What is it that you're hoping to see shift in their way of thinking from the messages that the culture might have um, to to more of an eternal perspective? Well, I, I think that really hits the nail on the head is that I that's that's what I want to do through this ministry is to inspire eternal perspective. And the way that I'm doing that is is through storytelling. Um I, I don't think that I would have to spend all that long convincing people that culture, especially opposing viewpoints, seem pretty divisive right now. And I think that there's a temptation to be antagonistic, uh, to engage in that sort of derision. And, and I really think that the more we submerge ourselves in scripture, the more that we engage with this eternal perspective, the more that we can be settled, uh, not only in our own faith, but but in our own way of life and and try to handle any of these situations with love. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't think that engaging in the eye for an eye, the mud slinging, the inflammatory sort of language is, is uh, an appropriate response. I don't think it's a way to go. Um, I love the idea of being bold for Jesus. And, and there were certainly times where we saw Jesus make a mighty stand but the times that we think of, like Jesus turning the tables at the temple, those were family matters. Those were, those were times where he was in the temple where people are supposed to be worshiping God, and they're misusing that power. That's when he got you know, inflamed, when he was talking to people who were outside of the family, whether it was to, to Gentiles or those who weren't uh, living according to the way that God wanted them. He was gentle. He was loving. He was kind. And I think that's something that we're missing. And, and, and the more that we focus our eyes on him and try to have that eternal perspective, I think that's the way that we can go. So that's what I want to inspire people to do. Yeah, I love that uh, for sure. And it, it is a divisive time that we're in. And, uh, if we don't keep the long game, in mind uh, of eternity and that souls are at stake. Um, we can convert image bearers into, into people that are enemies that God actually loves mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. So as you think forward with, um, with think forever, um, are, do you have additional resources, guests that you're bringing in? Is this something that, that you just want to continue to build on your own or, or where do you see this scaling to as best as you can tell? Yeah. So I, I love storytelling as a medium. Uh, I, I think it, it gets to the hearts of people uh, quickly. You know, I, I'm willing to engage with a story anytime, any place. And so I was, I was really fortunate this last season on the podcast to have some guest contributors, some other authors come in and tell stories that I was able to uh, read. And in the future, I would love to have more 
contributors like that. We're already looking ahead to season two of that podcast, and I have some some more guest authors lined up for that. Um, and as we're as we're looking ahead to to potentially different avenues, whether it's written word or film, uh, more audio uh, type presentations. Um, that's that's what I'm really looking forward to is having a space where more storytellers can come and find an outlet and people uh, can come to know that they're going to be able to consume excellent and uh, heavenly focused stories. Yeah, so, and obviously The Chosen has been a really popular series. So it sounds like you, you're open to the potential to incorporate some visual media. Yeah, absolutely. I... You know, I, <laughs> it's, it's hard to not daydream when, you know, when you're thinking about all the things that you could do, I have some really great people in my life who are encouraging me to focus on the couple of projects that are in front of me right now. Um, but I have been hugely encouraged uh, by the chosen. I, I grew up in the church and um you know, specifically in sort of the nineties when, when I was coming up, there was, uh, there was a culture of settling for lower quality, sacrificing quality in order to just have faith-based content. And I, I respect the work that, that people have done in, in trying to have more faith-based content out there. But I think we're at a point now where we don't we don't have to settle. We as believers can scrutinize the quality of the work that artists are putting out and hopefully uh, demand more of ourselves and of the people who are creating on our behalf. And so uh, that's one of the reasons why I've really enjoyed the chosen series is because it has it has done that it has brought really high quality in terms of film and acting and storytelling character development oh my gosh i i don't want to give spoilers to, <laughs> to anybody who's not caught up with the show but the end of the last season resonated with me so much one of the characters uh gave an explanation that I had never heard before. So it it gave a voice to feelings that I have had even recently and and really legitimized that. And I th I think that's what good storytelling does. It 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 holds up a mirror and it reflects ourselves to us. And if we can see characters that we can identify with, it's all the more powerful. That's great. Well we're going to take another quick break to hear from our sponsors and we'll be right back. This is Keith Atnison, founder of Freedom Summit Consulting. If you are a small business owner, you may find yourself working long days with the challenges of managing employees and making decisions with increasing economic uncertainty. We help owners identify opportunities to increase business value, develop the next generation of leaders, and design a plan for the eventual sale of their business that meets their long-term goals. Please visit freedomsummitconsulting.com or call 208-508-2416 to schedule a complimentary consultation. So Joe, with the the BEMA and, and the podcast, you're having an impact on people that um, is helping them maybe really broaden their awareness that what they're doing here really has an internal impact and, and that they should really be working towards an eternal impact. What do you see as some of the challenges for them moving forward in their faith and in incorporating that desire, we have, um, you know, a lot of social media. Here we are digitally communicating to each other, but there can be an element of isolation there as well. So with that as context, what do you see as um, next steps for folks that are being transformed um, to continue to grow? Hmm. Well, you know, you touched on something that I'm <laughs> a little bit passionate about, and that's the the amazing technology that we have, the fact that you and I can have this conversation almost like we're face to face from far away. And, you know, especially during COVID that was hugely helpful. Um, but 
I think that in some ways that has hindered us a little bit in terms of engaging with our local community as believers. Um, watching church online from home misses the point. And that's been a big problem for a lot of churches where folks have kind of adopted this, um, well, I'll just tune in from the couch. Yeah. And I, I listen to sermons online. That's, it's not, it's not bad to do that. What it is bad to do is skip your local church service in lieu of watching it from home. And the reason for that is we are commanded in scripture to get together for the glory of God, for the good of our brothers and sisters in Christ. And, um, and it's really to our detriment that we forego that. Um, so that, that's one aspect of it. But, but another is that as people are being inspired toward this eternal perspective, I want people to understand that your life is one whole. You don't have your work persona and your home persona and your friends persona and your church persona. You're just, you're just one person. And in that way, your life is your mission field. If you're a believer, you are here on this earth to serve the Lord in any way that you can, in any space that you find yourself in. And so to be able to take this little glimmer of inspiration and and to hold on to that and say if i'm if i'm spending time with friends whether they're believers or non-believers i'm going to take that inspiration with me and i'm going to let that light shine um and and like i said i think that that goes for spending time with believers in your church community and and it goes for you know how are you going to conduct yourself while you're at work and how are you going to conduct yourself at a, a big family holiday, <laughs> you know, where there might be some tension? You're taking that with you, and you are an ambassador for Christ wherever you are. I think those are two great themes that I'm picking up from you. One is we, we are not designed to be in isolation. We're, we're encouraged to remain in a gathering of believers, um, but also that we don't have this, what I call sacred secular divide, where I, I participate in, in Sunday activities, and that's sacred, and, and then I just show up at work on Monday, and um, now that's secular land, and so to, to really be wholly integrated um, with an eternal perspective, it's, it's great encouragement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, anything else for the the Be Bold for Jesus podcast listeners that that you would just encourage them with it as um, as we've had some time together here? Man, I I love j- just the name Be Bold for Jesus is is fantastic, and I I love just in some of our conversations how you've um, explained that the the way that you're trying to do that is is not an in antagonistic or inflammatory way but in a kind and loving way and and that's that's what i want to encourage people toward uh more than anything is is that you can live your life for the lord in a kind and loving way that you can that you can show how much love and how much acceptance there is inside of the family of god um and do it in a way that is completely unashamed. Um, and so I, I really hope that uh, that this message gets out to even more people uh, to be inspired to do exactly that. That's great encouragement. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't have said it better. You know, to have our hope in something that's not based off of um, individual circumstances or even collective political circumstances, if we can have a hope eternal. Um, there's something that's um, so attractive about that um, yeah. in a season where people are looking for um, for hope and, yeah. and often looking in, in all the wrong places. Well, I'm really excited to, to get to see you uh, this October at the Be Bold for Jesus podcast. In the meantime, for listeners that want to learn more about what you're up to, 
um, it sounds like the place to go is thinkforever.org. Is that correct? Yep. Everything, uh, live performances, podcast, everything's on there. Um, if you want to just search up the podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple, um, just type in think forever and, uh, and we'll be there. Awesome. Well, thanks, Joe. Would you be willing to close our time in prayer? Of course. Yeah. Thank you. Lord, I thank you so much that we have this opportunity to talk about eternal perspective, to talk about being bold for you. Lord, I pray that if anyone is listening to this right now, that they would be encouraged that they are not alone, that they have a community that not only spans the globe, but spans all of time of men and women who are here to serve you as their brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, I pray that you would give encouragement to everyone listening today, that they would be emboldened to live their life for you. Yes, Lord. That eternal perspective, Lord, we love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, once again, thinkforever.org is the place to look up some more resources. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you this fall. And thank you to our listeners for joining us. Take care. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. We pray that you have been empowered by today's discussion. The Be Bold for Jesus podcast is supported by listeners just like you. So be sure to subscribe and share the Be Bold for Jesus podcast. We appreciate any donations God may put on your heart in support of this podcast, our weekly He's the Solution ministry sermons, the thousands of free Bibles that we send out annually, and the Be Bold for Jesus annual conference. God bless you, and be sure to tune in next week.